if I introduce myself, Clive Holtham and my colleague Martin Rich from City University of London, and we're going to split the presentation between us. Um, we've been working for a long time on simulations using online and other media, and the first half of the presentation will essentially be about failure, and I'm taking that part. And the second part will be about success, which Martin is going to cover, and our um, Twitter IDs are down there if you want to cover this. The, we're both from a business school, and business education has been using simulations for centuries, if not millennia. Uh, this was a, a military simulation set up by the em Emperor of France in the 17th century, and uh, was to enable simulation of battles to take place. The, the Prussians had mastered the art of military war games by 1812. So there's a long, long history of using simulations in the military for, uh, if you like, military administration purposes, but le much less so um, in the business world. In fact, uh, my record of failure in this actually extends over a 44-year period. Uh, that's when I did my master's degree in management at Birmingham, and my tutor there was called Bob Armstrong, and he developed manual simulations of crisis and emergency. And I thought this was the most brilliant thing that I'd seen, and I was determined that I would also do it. It was incredibly resource intensive, completely manual. And in fact, his article, which he wrote, was called On the Back of an Envelope, which kind of illustrates the methodology. Uh, I was then also in Birmingham uh, engaging with my colleagues at Aston University who were using drama to enrich and fiction to enrich uh, compute, very early computer-based simulations. So this is a long time where we had aspirations to do something but, but hadn't really uh, got on with it. Then Martin joined the business school in 1990 and look, as soon as he came, we started successfully implementing online simulations. I would dispute that, by the way. Uh, and he did it you know, in the pre-HTML days, 1990, uh, using email. We then got some funding for a board game, and this board game, which you see in use with executives at the top right, um, is really the basis of the online simulation that we've got now. Essentially, it's based on rounds, and the idea that people play roles. And finally, we were lucky enough to get funding from the big lottery to enable us to introduce a management soap opera uh, where we actually used uh, playwrights and novelists to create our scenarios. And uh, you'll see from the photograph that it was loosely based on the archers. The archers was actually funded by the Ministry of Agriculture to promote learning by farmers. And uh, I was hoping Gavin was going to be here. Since he's not here, I'll only give him a small credit in with a small part in uh, our road to success. But his book, which he was the co-author of, Moodle 2 for, for Business, showed me that you could actually use Moodle to run a small business. And Martin and I extrapolated that to the idea you could run it to use a simulated large business. Um, I was lucky enough to meet a colleague from Australia who developed online role play using Moodle with secondary for prospective head teachers. And finally, Peter van der Heiden, who I'm very pleased to say is here at this Moodle moot, had an inspirational session in Dublin where he used post-it notes. And for a long, long time, I was carrying uh, a, a color photocopy of Peter's post-it notes, the method he used to design online simulations. And I'm going to uh, pass over to Martin now because despite all of this, 44 years of planning, thinking, wonderful uh, stimulation, including from our Australian colleague, we, despite all of this, uh, we, were, we were in a position of inaction. Okay. Um, what should I do? Let me just uh, do this. I, I think before doing anything else, I want to claim a little bit of Clive is being much too kind to me when he talks about success being involved because... The problem with me coming along in the early 90s and trying to get students to use email is that we had students saying, 
Nobody uses email. Email is just used by a few techie people like uh, Dr. Rich and Professor Holton, who don't really, people in the real world, people don't run business on this stuff. And of course, some of you will recognize that, and I can recognize that with hindsight, because it's been a classic disruptive innovation that um, we were, in a way, we were a bit too early in doing that. Anyway, having done all sorts of exciting stuff early on, we then got to um, the position, we looked at what Mary Keith from La Trobe did. We, were, we, we, we came across a number of examples of people doing interesting things with tools, not necessarily just Moodle, but tools which were straight out of the box. The first one was that um, Mary Keith from La Trobe was doing some interesting things just with setting up news on Moodle, because the news forum sets, sends things by email, which by this time students were accustomed to, or we come out the other end and the students were saying, actually nobody under 30 uses email, but that's another story. We were using groupings and groups, and we were able to get students to submit things. So we were interested in how these tools were used, but at the same time, we then went along to a conference organized by the Charter Association, or what was then the Association of Business Schools, we're getting technical problems here. Now the Charter Association of Business Schools, who move around, I think this was, this was in York, and we panicked. We panicked because we realized that, in a good way, because we realized that other people were doing similar things with simulations and with low technology. And particularly, they were doing things which fitted with something which we wanted to achieve, which was to get students, and particularly first-year students, to feel what it was like to run a business. So we were particularly impressed by this one. This is called Laputare. It was um, devised by a woman called Ros Sunley from the University of Winchester. We went to Ros and said, well, what do you base this on? Is it all based on complex, high-quality technology? And essentially, she'd created this whole wonderful story using basic, very simple blogging tools. The WordPress, if I remember right, was all done on WordPress. So using very simple blogging tools and using a huge amount of um, uh, student, student support and intri intriguing fiction writing, she created this thing called Lapitari. So we thought, we need to try and keep up with these people and do something, do something rather similar, which meant that we moved on to... We came, we came up with the idea of dusting off some of the work which had been done by know-how non-profit to do with this fictitious, remember the online soap opera? We thought this could be applied to working with first-year students. Now, we then went and spoke to our central e-learning unit, and they said, they put us in touch with people in our health sciences department, because as a university, we actually do a lot of work we don't have a medical school, but we have a very active health sciences school. We do a lot of work in things like nursing and midwifery, and particularly mental health, public health areas like that. And we discovered that there were people in adult mental health who were also interested in creating a simulation. Now, we've both done pretty successful simulations, but sadly, only one of them managed to win a £10,000 prize, and I'm sorry to say it wasn't us, it was the mental health people. So they actually were able to go on. But nevertheless, we were able to do something. We actually got hours working before the mental health people did. So maybe just see if we can get this to move on. Okay, so we created a module for first-year undergraduate management students called Managing Business Functions. And initially, in previous years, we'd taught this as a module where the students learnt a little bit of everything. everything. They learnt a bit about accounting, a bit about information systems, a bit about marketing. What they didn't really learn was how all these were interconnected. So what we did was to set up a simulation, set up a game, in effect, where over nine rounds, over a couple of months, the students got the chance to play one of nine different roles in a big fictitious company called Millcaster Global Industry. And because we were playing one of those roles, they had to deal with plausible sounding challenges. We got a play, we got a novelist, in fact, to come up with some challenges and to come up with challenges which were typically 
ones where there was no clear right answer. So we did a lot to do with dealing with um, wicked problems, one where there's no obvious correct answer. So these, by the way, these are students in a city centre university, full-time students. So students where the primarily, where, where the mode of instruction is primarily face-to-face. -face. But we asked them to work in virtual teams on Moodle at the same time. And we're dealing with 175 first-year students and we had 10 different roles. We, then we used nine of them. We created 10 different roles. So for each round of the, of the simulation, you would get, for example, CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility, would take responsibility for leading one round. DGI, Design and Innovation. The students doing that would take responsibility for leading one round. Okay, that's fine. For each round, we would nominate one other student or one other function, the student doing that function, would be what we call the first responder. So they would have to come back with a certain amount of time to comment on whatever the decision leader had done. And then we would also nominate the students doing one function to be what we call the performance auditor. So they would actually observe what other people were doing and comment and come up with other bits of information. And the point is that if we had a group of nine students working together using a Moodle forum to discuss whatever challenge they were given. We could use Moodle to give each group, each member of that group, a slightly different briefing. So each one of the nine participants had slightly different information. And we could use that to get the students to engage in an active and effective decision. Okay. Okay. So I'll uh, just go on to the, the last slide, but I'll also say the addition to the uh, lead, what we call the leadership groups, which are made up from these nine different functions. Uh, students were also in these horizontal groups, so all the accountancy students were in a professional group where they could discuss their problems, the difficulties they were having with the marketing people, and so on. So they were actually in a matrix organization, which is very typical of a large uh, multinational <laughs> such as Millcaster. Uh, so we've tried to describe a little bit about what we've done, but what we wanted to do really was to really rec recognize and acknowledge the fact that there's a community of people out there who over this 44 year period uh, have been helping us. We got fantastic support um, from within our own institution. We shared the risk with nursing. Both of us were quite nervous about high risk, uh, high stakes um, innovation and going in with our colleagues from adult mental health meant a significant sharing of the risk. Uh, we've had wonderful support from the community. I particularly remember that Dublin conference, not necessarily the academic parts of it, but it was a, a very memorable a, a, a social and, if you like, a team-building uh, level. And, uh, of course, we also have, have interacted with people outside our own uh, discipline. So Mary O'Keefe, who helped us from Australia, she's in the Faculty of Education but she's also dealing with professional education in complex uh, areas. And I think if we look back now uh, with the benefit of hindsight, um, we benefited enormously from uh, fairly wide reading, being open to looking at what people in other disciplines uh, are doing, um, almost obsessive persistence and curiosity, certainly my carrying around of Peter's wonderful post-it note uh, diagram was, was an example of that uh, obsession and using our local uh, discipline-based and international networking to try and find the best sources we could of somebody else who's faced exactly the same difficulty as us. So this is partly, although it's, we started with failure, we would like to celebrate being part of these vibrant communities which have really helped us and we would also in turn like to help other people. Interesting. I think we have five minutes for questions. So, does anyone have a question? Yes, question here. What's the mechanics of actually getting the information to students? What's the mechanics of actually getting the information to students? What's the mechanics of actually getting the information to students? 
Travis, how did you actually get at least each student uh, what they were supposed to do? This, this is where Moodle 3 was of, of huge significance to us. Um, we simply, uh, they, they have nine rounds. They're all, all 170 students are given a news item on a Sunday and a Wednesday, because we run it twi twice a week, uh, at 8 a.m. via a news item. So that's very straightforward. The briefing of the individual professional groups takes place at the same time and uh, each of the nine groups is given a biased and slanted advice private, privately through uh, groups. So it's all done through groups and grouping. And especially now with Moodle 3 where you can time events, I, Martin and I don't actually have to get up at 8 o'clock on a Sunday morning. We can preset that up. So it's all done through forums. Uh, news and forums. And through groups. Through and, and groups and groupings. We create this matrix by people being part of each student's member of, well, actually two, two important groups. One is for the professional function, one is a leadership team. But yeah. Right. If I could just say, is Lewis Carr in the room? Because he's, you're there. Good. Excellent. So you're ready to go, but we'll just have a few more minutes of questions. Okay, thank you. Do, do you have some suggestions for the, the, the Moodle wish list uh, with regards to simulation? I have one to do with the groups, which is it would be to make it much easier to set up groups, to, to, to set up groups from a spreadsheet, much easier to import groups. That's something which was clumsy and a lot of work, certainly with Moodle 2. That was a lot of work early on, and we could have done it better. And the other thing, I think one of the things I learned, I don't know about you, Clive, one of the things I learned is not to do anything mission critical on Moodle on my phone while I'm on a train. Because much as you think you've got things right, the scope for getting something a little bit wrong when using that small display. So maybe work on the mobile, inter mobile interface, not just because the students like it. Um, our Australian colleagues wanted to have anonymous role playing. This is an important feature of large-scale online simulations. And that Moodle 1, which you, I can't remember it, uh, Peter, you may be able to remember Moodle 1, uh, did have a role-play function. And that allows for anonymous use, and I would think that's probably the number one thing that, that other people... What We haven't found any problems with it not being anonymous, but some people reckon you can't do role-play properly if it's not anonymous. Okay, if I could ask one question, it's unfair to expect you to answer this in briefly, I expect, but you said that high technology is not important, so what would you say are the most important things to make a successful simulation, briefly? The, I think the single best thing we did was we hired a novelist to write the scenarios. The novelist, because there were nine rounds, essentially created a small soap opera with drama, excitement, backstabbing. Uh, doesn't happen in your uni university, but um, the things that... that ha so the students have to be able to identify it as realistic. They don't need it physically realistic. They do not need 360-degree virtual reality. They have to feel emotionally that this is real, and that can be done through fiction and drama. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So I think now if we hand over to Lewis to 